Oh goodness. <laughs> I'm so sorry I didn't even start the <laughs> I didn't start the YouTube stream. I'm so sorry, YouTubers. Okay. Um so Friday we kicked off a weekly challenge. Um I did some shoes, at least proportion of shoes. Covered that on <laughs> Friday. Uh, so sorry, you probably missed the first uh, eight minutes here, YouTube. My apologies. Um, we warmed up. I was talking about Discord. Hello, Cloppy, Bradley. Tell me where you guys are watching from. But yes, my apologies. I totally bungled that one. All right, anyhow. So, <laughs> thanks, Cami Toledo. Um, so we launched this challenge. So this week, um, you guys have the opportunity to post some shoes. If you want feedback, I'll be in the channel. I'll pay attention, pay attention rather, and give you some feedback. So, um, feel free to join that discord server, participate in the challenge. If you want, um, that's live. And like I mentioned today, I'm, I'll just go over this again for the YouTubers since I did not, uh, switch over to the live stream. Um, there's a channel called Video Requests, and I haven't been as good at paying attention to it, so I'm trying to be better. And so today I'm gonna to cover just a couple things in here. We had a request from Tom for some faceted surfaces. We also have this tank, so we could probably attack both of those at the same time. What's up, Bradley Classen? Oh my goodness. Is that the same person? Wow, hello. I think so. Anyhow, um, so yeah, feel free to use this channel post your requests, ideas, whatever, um, and then check out weekly sketches. That's our challenge. Um, I'll be happy to give you guys feedback on your own shoe drawings. So not only do you get to sketch with everyone, but also participate. So once again, hello, sorry for the mix up on the stream. I'm going to go for about an hour because I got some work to do after this, but here we go. Oops. Boom. We're back. Okay, no more messing with video stuff. All right, so there's my quick warm up, And now let's go ahead and tackle or talk about some faceted surface stuff. But to do that, I've got to go over a little bit of lighting. All right. So the, the request was, hey, how do, you, how do you shade faceted surfaces, right? How does that work? Um, so what I like to do is think of typically a primary light source and that comes from the top and the right but you could pick any direction you wanted really um, and once you've picked your light source or direction then I'll just use a cube as an example here you kind of have to think about values okay so if you take a minute and look around the room wherever you are okay so if you're sitting in a room wherever you are maybe you're watching in your bedroom, maybe you're watching in the kitchen, wherever the case, whatever the case may be, and there's a light overhead, okay, you're gonna get changes in contrast, okay, between these walls, all right, so there's gonna be contrast happening. Um, if you don't believe me, take a look at the walls in your room, and you're gonna see that there are shadows being cast, and if there's objects in the room and all that. Um, what I've found or observed is that you do get, uh, here, you get a little bit of dark and you're going to get light, depending on the orientation of the light, but and it could be the opposite, um, dark and light. Okay. So contrast is how you communicate form and show surface transition. So that being said, I'm going to bust out, we'll bust out the expensive markers today. All right. And let's go with, uh, let's play with some neutral grays. I haven't really used those. Hopefully they're, hopefully they're fresh. So fresh and so clean. Do I have enough? I got three, four, and I want two. And I'll explain why in just a sec. Or I could use three, five, seven in my cool grays, which looks like will be the case. Because for some reason I can't find my neutral gray too. Anyhow. We shall continue. All right, so I've got this object, all right, and now I'm gonna start with my lightest light when I'm shading, okay? So the top surface, if I have these three markers, and with markers, what you wanna have is you wanna have a decent spread. Let's put these out of the way. 
a decent spread in value. Um, and what I look for is essentially a 20% gap. And that's just your basic marker kit, right? So here it is 30%, 50%, and 70% gray, okay? So we've got a nice decent spread here. Now you could, like if I put the 40% gray in here, you'll see, you know, it's, it's subtle, but it's pretty close to the 50. And if I put the 60% in as well, right, it's pretty close. Um, so we just want enough contrast so I can make those jumps so that when I do put 50% gray here, for example, this one's drying out already. You might get another Copic marker refill tutorial going for you live. All right, so now I have that contrast that I'm after, okay, for these two edges. All right, something like that. So dark to light. Now, if we want to introduce, so this is pretty plain, so now we want to introduce some dynamic. Well, I'll shade the, the other side in first, and we'll talk about dynamics and what happens, okay? So... 70% here, like so, all right, just like that. And if we were to have some sort of shadow in the scene, I could use something like, you know, jump two more values here. I won't talk about shadow construction on this stream, but if you care to uh, learn about shadow construction, what that's all about, I'll post a link here in the YouTube chat. All right. And let's see. I'll actually copy both of these for you. So I've done two videos in the past on shadows um, that you can check out. Content's relevant. So let me go ahead and copy this link. I don't have this. I don't have this on rapid fire. Okay, we got we got an international show today. We got South Africa, we've got India got the United States of course welcome everyone all right so there's two videos on shadows all right um, let's see Argentina England London Mississippi hello hello welcome everyone Wacom is not a country just kidding all right <laughs> so using that 90% gray now okay something like that you can shade in your shadow however you want. I used to be more picky about shadows and how you shade them in, but I don't really care anymore. Just do it however you like. Um, whatever makes sense. All right. Czech Republic. Wow. Got people all over. Okay. So I've got this cube or box casting a shadow, and now I want to talk about dynamics. So light never hits a surface perfectly evenly. Okay. So if I have something of a flat surface like this, and it's resting on the ground, light's going to hit the ground. Light tends to reflect depending on the, uh, you know, surface finish. I'll explain that in just a sec. So surface finish is something you want to consider and think about. So if, if you have a smooth surface and light hits that surface, it'll reflect back such that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection, or I equals R. I know it's a little technical, but think of it that way. If we have a rough surface, right, something with bumps, we're going to get light hitting this rough surface at a certain normal, which is going to change depending on if even if the light ray is coming like this, now I've got a normal like this, so I may have a different angle. So this is what causes diffusion with light. Here's another example here. Let's do if this light ray hits here, got this normal like so. So now my angle of incidence and reflection is more like that, right? So you're going to get diffusion happening if you have a rough surface, okay? So think of it that way. All right, so there's my reflected lines. So if you've ever wondered why something looks the way it does, yes, physics. Take a, take a look at um, the underlying principle, and that's going to give you uh, a better understanding of how to even approach. Okay, where do I put my marker strokes? Where do I put all this stuff? All right. So what I what what this means to to say is that in the environment we're gonna have light hitting this surface, this vertical surface, right? 
it's going to hit the ground. It's going to reflect back, but there's also light hitting the ground and hitting the surface. So as I shade, I try to introduce a bit of a gradient. This is way more detailed than I usually go, but Tom is one of our patrons. Wanted to um, show him and tell him thanks for his ongoing support. Okay, so from the top here, what I'll do is apply one more layer of this 70% and start to space it out, let the marker dry a little bit. Okay, so now I have a little bit of a gradient there. This cube is driving me crazy because I didn't draw it as well as I'd like to. All right, so now with the 50%, we can do the same thing, kind of apply a little bit of a gradient down, wait till that dries, hit the top again. So now we're really dialing up the contrast on that front edge. And then here, what I'll do, you could either do this from the back corner, or if you want to keep the strokes consistent, just start from the very back edge and move forward, wait till that dries, and then hit it again. So now we have a more dynamic video. Mad Penguin is asking, can I save this video? Just check out my YouTube. Um, by way of information, once again, I've updated my YouTube so that when you do go to YouTube, you will see the most recent live streams. Okay, so that gives you an opportunity to go back and watch. Um, tons of content, they're all about an hour long or more. So if you're bored or you know, if you just want to learn or whatever, just watch, you can do that in on YouTube rather. Okay, so that's a flat surface. Well, what happens, what happens if we now have something like this? All right, we've got a little bit of an angled surface here. All right, something like this. How do we shade something like that? All right, so like I said, this is where your in-between values come or doubling up on your values comes in handy. All right. So I'm going to start with my light gray. I always start with the lightest light. Okay. You want to work light till you get it right. Now these two surfaces, because they face up, right? My light source, I'm assuming again, is coming from the top right. Um, I'm going to uh, use my, my lightest gray here. Okay, I know this surface, because it falls off, is going to be darker. So this is what I would call my number two surface, if I were thinking of it this way. All right, and then I now have this 30% here. We can just fill it in for now. Same thing here. All right, so this one's going to be the lightest, and we're going to have an in-between here and then darker. So since this is an in-between, I'm actually going to double up my 30%. Or if you wanted to, you could jump to a 40% there, and that would help with the transition. All right, so light until you get it right. Think of it that way. And now, since this surface is just flat, right? I like to kind of outline the area first, typically. Something like that. And then get that dynamic lighting factor in. All right, so there you go. All right, so we've got value 1, 1 1.5, 2, 3. And then if we had a shadow, let's, let's just calculate that real quick. Again, you can watch that video. Um, if you want, and that will show you how to calculate your shadow. I'm trying to, I think I messed up here. Hold up. Edge, edge. Why is this confusing me? This does not look right. All right, let's get the back edge. You know, that's going to go there. Yeah, it's really weird. It's like a very slight angle, very, very slight, but it should be something like that. Anyhow, so then you could shade this in with your cool gray nine, and that would give you your shadow. Well, what about reflections? If I wanted to put a reflection into this, how would I do that? Um, what you want to do is project down, and I'm just talking about a, a tabletop surface reflection here, 
So just project, project down all these lines, and then look at this distance, place that distance there, all right, just like that. Just flip it. Yeah, this is really weird. It's like a really weird reflection. Yeah, because I'm not gonna see I'm not gonna see this face in the reflection, so it looks kind of weird. All right, and then yeah, something like that. So if I wanted to do the reflection, then I could do it um, thusly. All right, so there's how we get a reflection in. All right, so the next thing we could do is what if we want to reflect something into this surface? Okay, so let's say. Just for argument's sake, I've got some weird dot here. Some weird dot on this surface. Okay. If I want to reflect this in, then I just take this measurement, flip it right here. Okay. And now I'm going to have my dark dot being reflected back into this surface, like so. Okay. If I want to reflect the shadow back, I would do the same thing. If this is a little bit shiny, just take a look at those lines and basically flip the shape of those lines. And now I can have a reflection of that shadow in the surface, something like that. Okay. So again, when you Think of drawing, just think about these simple principles and it can really help you. This is really tripping me up, um, just this very slight angle on this edge. So pardon the uh, moderate confusion there. Um, and if, if this surface had a color, for example, we could reflect the color back into, back into our cube. Uh, do I want to do that? No, I'm not going to do it. All right. So what does this have to do with anything? Okay. So Tom in the discord, once again, had asked, okay, can you take a look at doing something with facets? Okay. So this was, I think a shoe design that he had come up with, but there was also a request for some sort of tank looking vehicle. So I figure what if we just did a faceted tank? So that kind of combines things. Plus I missed out on um, Sci-Fi Sunday yesterday. So this is a good opportunity to just kind of do both. All right. Thank you all you Instagrammers for joining. Once again, if you want to participate in the chat and just be a part of the community, then head over to YouTube. I know it sounds cumbersome, but um, that is the place to be in the chat that I'm watching. Also hit up the Discord, join that, and uh, participate in the weekly challenge today, or this week at Shoes, I should say. Um, all right, so let's just sketch some sort of uh, tank-like vehicle. I'm just gonna start with facets, okay. All right, we'll just kinda keep this somewhat simple. A little bit of a nose there, perhaps. I'm um, trying to decide where I want to put my tessellations. And by that, I just mean the triangles in the form or the shape. All right, so maybe this is the main structure of my tank. A couple more lines here, and then I'll go over just shading and how I think about the light on something like this. So sketch a day live. Thanks again for joining. Much appreciated. If it's your first time, hit subscribe, turn on alerts. Got a big crew today, so maybe this is just a good time on a Monday. Maybe. All right. And just for reference sake, let me look at these treads here. This one's a little bit higher up than the design that was shown to me. We'll just keep this loose. So yeah, maybe I can fudge this a little bit.
Kind of going freehand here. No underlay. But hopefully with that demo, you guys were able to pick up a little something. All right, so let's go ahead and get our treads going. As you sketch, once again, you want to work light till you get it right. When in doubt, rough it out, all that good stuff. Okay. So with that, I can just add some line weight, for example, to these treads. And it's just going to clean up this whole area. Um, this is just how I sketch. Some people like to sketch a lot cleaner. That's fine. Um, whatever works for you, but I found those tips to be helpful for me. All right, so there, now it's a lot cleaner in that area, okay? Blessings to you too, Latrice. Pipe, welcome back. Bienvenidos. Chancuya, hello. Cavs, what's up? We, uh, let's see, Kilo Crow, Govin. We got tons of people here, this is awesome. All right, so now I can do my ellipses. Now, remember when we did our ellipse practice, this is why we warm up, okay? And I'm just gonna make up some of this. get these ellipses in let's see I'm trying to not sketch exactly from that picture but use it just as a bit of reference because this thing is super technical and I don't have five hours to sit here and do all the details for you today I mean as fun as that may sound for you it would not be fun for me Pay attention as you draw as well to where you're holding your pen and how you're holding it. If you're holding on to your pen for dear life, you're probably holding on too tight. If your hand is getting cramped up, you're probably stressed. All right, so try and just be be light and light, deliberate, yet uh, approach things with uh, a sense of effortlessness. And you'll have that freshness that you're after um, for your sketch, okay? I don't know why I'm putting a plus sign there, but I just like it. Okay, a couple more little technical things in the background here. Some of this I'll just shade into. This will probably be the hardest part, and then I will add the shading. I suspect part of Tom's request as well was more of a less line-based drawing and more marker-based, um, but the principles apply, so should be fine. I just like sketching with, with pens. Once again, this is Sketch Day Live. I'm Spencer, industrial design, industrial designer, educator, and perhaps a little bit of a troublemaker. <laughs> At least I always get into trouble online. I left Facebook recently. I, uh, well, by left I mean I still manage and maintain the Sketch Day page, but my personal Facebook, I was like, okay, I'm done. Done, zo. Um, if you haven't yet watched the movie The Social Dilemma, that's not what did it for me, actually. Um, I decided to long before that. It's just, uh, wasn't the best place for me leading up to this riveting <laughs> election year in the United States. It's going to be lit. All right, so there we go. Now I can increase some line weight 
for example, add some things here. Maybe it's a little bit of a roll bar on the top, on the back as well. Add those details in. It looks like my ISO on my camera is set a little bit high. Apologies, YouTubers. I made some more changes to the studio, so um, my apologies. Can I do a hammer with the hand, like a hammer in use? I could. I could do that. Maybe I'll do that as, let's see, 33 minutes. Yeah, I should be good. We should be good to do that. Yeah, this, this thing is really interesting, at least uh, aesthetically. It's kind of cool. Whatever it is, I forgot. Um, what? Uh, it's almost like a snow cat, but it's not. Anyhow. All right, so reminder once again, we are now doing weekly sketch challenges. So if you want to try sketch something new and you want some feedback, Jordan in our Discord is moderating and running that, and I will be making myself available where possible. I'd also like to feature your sketches on the live if you're open to feedback on a live stream, so definitely participate if you want that. All right, so let's do our surfaces now, kind of like we did with the cube. I know this is going to be shadowed, and I want to obscure a bunch of what's under here anyways and use the lines as textures so I'm just gonna use this 90% just to kind of fill in All right kind of a loose fill with that you know if there's some light catching stuff and then on top of all that we could just hit these just with that 50% gray. I know I didn't cover um, shading cylinders, but similar principles, and there's tons of videos on the stream if you're interested. But here's an example, right? So kind of have to decide what my base tone's gonna be. I'll start with the 50 there, and then on these treads that are away from the light, albeit at an angle, shade that with the 50. Was that the nine that I was using? I think it was the nine. Anyhow, under here, I'm gonna use the nine because it's really in shadow. Okay, I'm gonna have shadow on the ground as well. So I can shade that in. Um, all this applies to digital sketching as well. So don't feel like just because Spencer's using markers that you can't do the same thing digitally. Thank you, Explosive Yoda, much appreciated. <laughs> I did win an award this week. Um, it's kind of a, it was a surprise. I'll just say that. It was a big surprise. It was the IDSA Individual Achievement Award. All right, here's a bit of that dynamic I'm talking about. So where you, you leave a little bit of light next to the dark to give you that contrast, okay? Also notice I'm rotating my paper because I'm trying to draw at an angle that is best for me. All right. Okay, so this side, because it's away from the light, I'm gonna just use the 50% kind of fill in. And I should say, I do appreciate the request. Um, I can't always do everything that I get, um, but I do, I do try. So thank you for your patience, much appreciated. Again, just anticipating that I'm gonna need some contrast here on this edge as I do my lightest value on this front surface. can kind of beef that up. Now, this is a cool gray, so it really doesn't have the full military uh, look, color, whatever. Um, maybe I'll do a little bit of ground and some elements around this. 
maybe a soldier. We'll see. We will see. All right. And maybe we can hint a little bit at what's inside. Just a little bit. A little bit of line weight here. And then secondary line to show some thickness. I'm not entirely sure how this thing opens up, but I'm just going to assume that this front piece here flips up somehow. Here's a little hinge exposed. Kind of throw that in. And I want to capture some of the rivets here as well keeping this thing together a couple dots so we'll use a combination of dark and light to highlight these so let's keep building up our contrast again you don't want to just jump in unless you're really, really sure where you need or want that contrast. You don't want to just jump in and get all your darks in at first. You want to kind of just work light until you get it right, okay? So again, away from the light, this one, angle-wise, facing up a little bit. These are up. These are... I guess somewhat up, it really just depends. Um, but I am gonna use some of this 70%. Here's an example of using contrast to show a surface change on this triangular inset area here. Blend with, or I will blend with a 50% cool gray, just like that. So I've got a little bit of shadow and some light working there to kind of show that separation. And on the back here, kind of do the same thing. So up, a little bit down, right? If you need that in-between value for some reason, if it's not working and you have a full set, you can always just grab something like this 60% gray, right? Just to get that in between value or tone going. All right, and since this is a window as well, I'm actually going to, let's round this, and then I'll add that secondary surface in here, maybe a little bit of text. Actually, I should have done the text in white, but that's all right. So once again, light gray, dark gray contrast is what's going to give you that three-dimensionality. Um, Karthik is asking a space connection mouse. Maybe. I know that was in the – oh, yeah, that was in the um, chat as well. So I'm going to I'm gonna save the hammer for another time, um, whoever <laughs> suggested the hammer. But definitely post it in the video request channel, um, and I can comb through that later. I can comb through that later and then I'm just guesstimating the shadow here, guys, and return to that, all right? So on the inside here, like I said, I just wanted to hint at maybe some details or things on the inside. So in these little grooves, 
I'm gonna leave some white spaces for reflections, but also there's our little cockpit thing. Um, I'll just kind of shade in here. It's a little bit dark, so I'm going to jump back to my 70%. Although, Karthik, are you trying to get me to do your homework again? <laughs> Sometimes people do that. I'm just going to go ahead and shade this out because we're really not going to see details in there. Maybe scribble in a little bit of this black, hinting at some details. All right, so we could do something like that. And then. If there is ground of some sort, kind of shade that in. Just using a wide Copic marker. So now that I've introduced a little bit of this orange, <clears throat> you can do a couple things to help this feel more like it's not just sitting on the brown. Okay, so I'm going to take this E35. If you have a pencil, you can do that as well, um, or you could utilize the airbrush. But I'm just going to hit some of this gray with a little bit of the brown. Okay, and if there's any sort of re reflectivity from the ground, meaning light's, light's going to hit that ground, right? And that light's going to get reflected back into our tank. So just a couple hits to help out. And then on the top, if you wanted to add some blue, for example, on the background, you would kind of strategically think about, okay, how do I, how do I add just a hint of blue? You could use an airbrush, um, something like that um, to kind of help out, all right? Add line weight is needed, where needed. This is just a Sharpie. on these treads and there is our lesson on faceted surfaces some shading I could probably go a little bit darker here actually so I'll take this 50% just kind of hit that yeah that feels a little better um, so contrast right Lightest lights, darkest darks. Think about your light source. Plan your shadows and all of that stuff. So we kind of started out by looking at our simple cube, talking about contrast, how light hits surfaces and so forth, shading that. Okay, what do you do if you need a half value, reflection, shadow, um, all of that good stuff. And here we are. So we've got our little tank concept here. Okay. All right. Karthik, is that your homework assignment to do an organic mouse? <laughs> Let me know. All right, someone wanted me to sketch a hammer. Okay, so I'll do that real quick. So something like a hammer. Um, because I'm not super confident, thank you, Foster. Foster is saying he loves my Procreate brushes. I do need to do a video, uh, follow-up video on how I use those brushes, when, where, all that stuff. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not going to do your homework for you. So how about you do it first, turn it in, and then come back with that, and I'll give you some feedback and uh, maybe do an overlay. Okay, so let's do a hammer. So what I like to do, actually, like quite literally, is I'll look at my hand, and then once I have a, a general idea of my hand, right, and where my fingers might go, then I kind of just finish it out that way. All right, so, okay. So people always ask, oh, how do you draw hand, this kind of thing? Um, this is quite literally how I'll do it. And then now I can plan out, all right, if I do have a hammer, what does that look like in my hand? Okay, slight, slight perspective here. I haven't drawn a hammer in a while, so. Let's see what we can, what we can cook up. So again, light till you get it right. And then once you are satisfied with that is that how i'd hold it maybe a bit more like that tighter grip okay tighter grip on that hammer now the trick with hands um at least as far as product design goes is i don't want to have the hand distract from the concept so the hand for me is a prop and not meant to be um, everything in the concept. So what I mean to say, let's make, let's make this say, I don't know, I guess a chrome or somewhat shiny hammer. I'm going to pull in the head just a little bit here. All right. So gray marker light to get it right. Um, and then we can put our lines on. So now that I have at least a guide, right, just roughly sketched out then I can resketch, not trace. So yeah, then I can resketch. Sorry, I was trying to focus there a little bit. Um, this concept. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to finish this off. I think I'm going to just give this a straight line, actually, like so. All right, and then the hand, now I'll just come in. And it's really about the outline of the hand, not so much. Like I'm not trying to capture fingernails. And all of that, I'm just trying to show, okay, if someone were holding this thing. And as far as like the position of the fingers, I'm just trying to follow the pattern that I established here at the top. So again, not trying to show fingernails. So now I can take a 30% gray, add a little bit of shadow where I need it. This handle feels a little bit off right through here. All right. So let's make this just a shiny hammer. And since it's shiny and I kind of know what I'm what I want and what I'm doing here, I'm going to just go ahead and add my nice chromey bits. I 
And now I'm going to take a 30 or even, you could even take a 20% gray just on the top here, create a nice little fade down to white. Like so. And then anything on the bottom is going to reflect up. So you got to pick a color. Um, I feel like doing orange or blue, something like that. So maybe I'll do orange. Let's get our oranges here. Uh, let's do three. Let's see. Four, seven, nine. Yeah, let's do that. Four, seven, nine it is. So again, I like to just kind of outline the area I'm going to shade and marker first. I think I'll have, yeah, I have time for one more quick sketch. Um, so if you guys have another request, I'll be happy to do that. Then I've got to get ready for a phone call. Um, and I should mention, by the way, if you are with a professional institution or educational, I'd also do workshops. So if you're interested, um, let me know. All right. Shall we? Yeah, let's do that. Let's texture this hammer grip as well. And I'm going to do a slow shade, a slow, nice, even shade on this hammer here. And again, the hand is a prop. It is not the main element. Whoa, I've never run out of my orange. This is amazing. It is running out. Let me know if you want to see me refill the marker. I'd be happy to do that, show you guys few things. All right, so that was yellow red 4. Now with Copic markers, I say this a lot, but with Copic markers, look at the numbers here. We've got yellow red 4, yellow red 7 and yellow red 9. Um and it's specifically 04, 07 and 09, which means that these are these are three what I would consider maybe ticks in value apart, but there's no yellow red 5 as far as I know. Um and then there's a yellow red seven to nine so these are 30 percent different in value and then 20 percent different in value oh what's up tom welcome back long time i did your faceted surface stuff today so you'll want to re-watch this stream that was something you requested in the uh video request channel a while back and i, I never got to it so definitely check that out all right so i'm using this yellow red seven i know there's going to be a shadow for my fingers or the fingers. Okay, so I can do that right there. Let's get some shadowing in. And I'm trying to be careful because I actually want to texture this as well, this hammer. All right, a little bit of shadow corners, shadow corners <laughs> happening there. Um, I like the idea of the orange moving up into this, but I'm not really sure if I'm going to do that yet. So that's why I've left it. Um, separate okay copics are so messy when you want to refill them they can be they can be let me see if i actually have Let's see if i have a darker yellow red i can use okay four seven nine yeah four seven nine four seven nine i may have to jump into my e's here which are my browns to really get what i'm after so, which is fine. You can always mix colors. All right. So, yellow, red, nine. Let's get our shadow core going. Right through here. Now, if you want your colors to look saturated, try and stay with pure colors. If you don't mind and want to just add a shadow on this actually I'll do this I'll do that last because I don't want to I don't want to jump ahead of myself here all right so there's our main body well what if we want to add some texture to this guy what if there's bumps okay so I can come in this might take some time but this is the e7 marker okay and I'm just gonna add some texture to this hammer, like so. Oop. 
Oops. Maybe these dots spread out toward the end. Who knows? Something like that. Okay. So, ooh, draw a sewing machine. Maybe next time I'll do that, Lisa. Okay, so I've got a white pen. Do I, do I have my white pencil there? Yes! Hallelujah! We're in business. So yeah, Tom, I did this for you a little bit earlier. Um, and this quick demo on lighting and faceted surfaces. So be sure to check that out. All right, so now on each of these dots, I'm gonna add a little bit of white. Because essentially I'm shading mini spheres, if you can think of it that way. All right, so I need that contrast to help these pop and feel like a quick 3D texture. And you'll see why I waited for the gray uh, at the very end. Another favorite technique of mine is to use a little bit of pencil on top of the marker. So if you have like a brown pencil, if you have like a brown pencil, we can use that. Or like a deep red, this is a terracotta. So I can come in on the back side of each of those white dots and just add a little tick. Okay, just a little tick like that. And that's gonna help you communicate the three-dimensionality. So just a reminder again, YouTubers and Instagrammers, we now have weekly challenges. Jordan's gonna be running those. Um, topically speaking, I'll pick stuff to do on Friday with you guys. But this week, the topic is shoes. So if you wanna sketch shoes, post shoes, get feedback from me or others, feel free to post there. All right, so now that I have these dots, I can add just a little bit of intensity to my core shadow with this brown pencil. All right, so just on the side here. Sometimes you can use a black pencil too, it just depends on the effect you're after. But I just want these shadow cores to kind of pop a little bit more. Okay, so right there, right in there. Like so. Okay. And now <laughs> I'll use that gray marker for just that little shadow. And that's because I just want a little less saturated look for that dark area. So it's just going to dial down the saturation a bit in that spot. Now the hand itself, I don't want that to be the highlight or star of the sketch. One, because again, like many designers and my, and yeah, I'm not the best at drawing hands, at least that's the story I tell myself. I do okay. So just a little bit of gray marker here to kind of bring out form if necessary, All right? Just enough for the three dimensionality of it. And then for the product itself, a little bit of line weight. To help this pop. No worries, calves. It's just a good spot so that the, the challenge with Instagram is it's hard to have threads and like communicate with people and have you like get meaningful feedback. So I, I like to think of Instagram more as a gallery, not really a conversation tool. So Discord link is in the YouTube video description. So yet another benefit to using YouTube to watch. All right, Tom, take care. Best to you. Stay safe.
All right, Bradley sent some sketch ideas to the Discord. Let's see. Okay, cool. We got some submissions from the weekly sketch challenge already. I will be featuring those on Friday. So if you want your work to be on the show, check it out. I'll try and give you feedback, compliments, high fives, and so on. So check that out if you're interested. Try to be somewhat delicate with the lines here. I don't want to overpower my sketch with this sharpie all right so maybe something like that and then we can add a background I think I'm gonna use the BFM today for the background that is the big fat marker and to kind of touch up the chrome oh also I should mention <clears throat> new stickers will be here today I'm going to try and give away a few of those. So hopefully you guys catch the stream. The streams. But yeah, I just, I just love this marker. I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's the smell. I just love the smell. <laughs> my door is open to my studio right now, so I shouldn't pass out, but it is pretty toxic. It just has a nice um, edge to it too, in terms of looking like a brush. So if I wanted to just, you know, even finish out this background like that. It's also refillable. <clears throat> so super handy. All right, a couple things here. Like I said, I couldn't quite decide. Okay, do, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, but. Couldn't quite decide, do I want to make this chrome or not? I think I am gonna just um, keep it metal. All right, so I'll just add a little shadow, maybe a little chromey thing there. A little chromey for my homies. And then a nice little this little soft fade. Now, this hammer is orange, so if this is round, for example, we may get just a little bit of orange in there. So if you wanted to try, we could add just little hints of orange being reflected into this chromey bit, all right? Could add just a little bit there. That's gonna help it tie together, all right? Okay, so there's our second sketch. Um, also another reminder, so many reminders today. Um, the sketches from the stream today will be available in the Discord, or not the Discord, the Patreon Google Drive. So there is a Patreon, 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 Google Drive, where you get access to the high resolution sketches scanned after the show. All right, 1108, I did have a request for a sewing machine. Should I do that now? Let's see, 107. Okay, Bradley sent some ideas as well. I'm not seeing those. Um, okay, I got, not sure what these are. These are Instagram links. Alpha Lion is asking, not asking, but suggested a mech helmet. We've got a boot. Uh, let's see. We've got some chair stuff, printer. Oh no, that was a different channel, my bad. Yeah, you gotta post in the video requests, otherwise I won't really see it. So, um, in the general. Okay, we got some shoes, lots of shoe stuff. So yeah, post those in weekly sketches if you're doing shoes. Um, 
and then if you want something else post that in the video request link living fish bowls i mean it is i, I am kind of winding down but the good thing is the streams are archived here on the youtube you'll be able to watch once the video is processed check out uh what we're doing sorry youtubers we're a little zoomed in there there we go so there's there's that sketch all right um yeah i'll just do a super quick sewing machine that was a request i just got sewing machine i have a sewing machine i just haven't learned to use it yet <laughs> confession because you know time so for this for this example i think i'll do um we'll go heavy on the construction lines and this process is essentially form divide and beautify okay so construction lines here here's the form you can sketch through to the other side or draw through as scott robertson puts it and then we can divide I have drawn a sewing machine before, come to think of it. Um, but we can divide our shape here into proportional blocks. Okay, so that's the second step. First step, form. Second step, divide. You know, just kind of sketch it out. Figure out where things go. If this is, you know, is this the front? Is this the back of the sewing machine? I'm going to make this, well, whatever front means, right? Um, so I'm just going to add a couple tick marks here because I need to kind of situate myself so I can draw these lines where they need to go. So this is a slight angle on the top of our sewing machine. Continue to divide here. An ellipse. Could even curve this in if we needed to. I'll just continue that through there. All right. Maybe the back of this thing, for some reason, has an elliptical profile. So I can bring that down through here as well. We'll just keep drawing through like so. And I want to mirror the shape on the top ever so slightly. So I'm just going to angle that and now draw back. Like so, let's go ahead and round these corners. So we have our form, we've divided the form, okay? And now we're trying to beautify the form a bit. I need, looks like I need to add some controls here. Again, I'm not super familiar with sewing machines, so I'm probably butchering this. Bye Cavs, thanks for hanging out. All right, and every good sewing machine needs a foot, I think. So I'm just gonna sketch a generic foot here. And I'm trying to remember if the prongs go up toward, I think they go up toward, right? Like so. But I'm just gonna keep it, keep it kinda technical looking, but very loose. Maybe the top is actually slightly chamfered. I can bring that back. Um, I like the idea of this division, this, this front section, maybe being almost like you dipped the whole thing in some material. So I'm going to make that a thematic element. I've got our chamfer going back, like so. Go ahead and round this and draw through again. So um, there's that value of um, warming up and just making sure you can draw those ellipses. So at this point, you kind of have two choices. You can decide, all right, am I going to take, and I know what I'm going to do, but do you want to take uh, or use rather line weight? to kind of help things out, or you 
you could just do an overlay and redraw the whole thing. So two options basically, <clears throat> right? Uh, looks like I need some sort of knob <laughs> on my sewing machine. So I'm gonna add just a hint of a knob toward the back. So a little bit of a cheat here, add some knurling to this. Uh, looks like I need some other knobs and dials. Think about your axis, where your ellipse is going. And then we can just draw that on the front. So in my case, I depending it, it, it really just depends on the sketch, who the sketch is for. You know, if it's for a client, then I need to probably have some more clarity in that sketch. So I might overlay the sketch rather than try and pull out details from the sketch like I am here. Okay. So two different ways to do it. Um, so again, there's that mirrored form shape. Just trying to at least aesthetically create something. And I'm just putting in a generic fake shadow here and it's fake because this would not look like the shadow would not look like this unless the light was like really high up. So I guess I could keep it tight and say my light source is just really high up. I could do that. Rotate your paper if you need to, to get that line drawn at the right angle that you want. Like so. And now, since I'm gonna keep this just um, really quick, I'm just gonna add some line weight to the outside. So as far as line weight goes, I like to think of three kind of main line weights. There's plenty of videos on the YouTube about line weight as well. Um, and I say three, but really that's somewhat of a simplification. But here you'll see just adding this line weight can add some clarity so that these construction lines kind of fade off. This is really subtle right in here, but there's actually two line weights. So you've got this one here and then a very subtle um, transition as this shape overlaps the other shape going back. And I know I'm probably forgetting some stuff, um, at least mechanically speaking. I think there's a plate that goes in on the sewing machine here think if I remember correctly um, also here's our foot it is shiny and chrome reminds me of Mad Max shiny and chrome um, so I'm just gonna put some weird technical doodads here because I'm not really trying to get this perfect I would have to sit look at it and like translate those things, but I'm just trying to create a credible looking sewing machine sketch. That's, that's my goal. All right. And since I'm just using pen, no marker for some of the shading, if you want, like on these rounded corners or edges, just a series of lines close together and then further apart just to indicate that shadow core or reflectivity can be helpful. Um, here, a little bit of a shadow, things like that. Now toward the top, I'm not using the Sharpie, I'm just using the Paper Made Flare and hitting that line a couple times and that's because since it's closer to the light source, I actually want it to be a much lighter line than the lines I was using toward the bottom of the sketch. Here's another 
area where I could throw those lines close together and then spread them apart to show some shading. Just real quick like that. All right, so I think we're in pretty good spot. Like I said, I have a phone call I've got to take and get ready for, so I'm gonna go do that. Thank you so much for watching, being here. We had a lot of people watching concurrently on YouTube, so once again, if you don't wanna miss these, hit that subscribe button, turn on alerts, specifically on YouTube, and that will I'll notify you whenever I do go live. I should be back tomorrow around, can I do the same? No, I can't do the same time tomorrow because I have a class to teach. So I'll be back, uh, let's see, early afternoon my time. So probably around 12 Pacific for a stream. I'm just gonna shade in the shadow using my pen here. This might sound weird, but when I'm doing these shadows with my pen, I actually take my eyes out of focus <laughs> as I'm drawing. Like almost cross my eyes a little bit. It sounds weird, but there's a little, little known fact about this process that I use. All right, just like so, and then since it's a black and white sketch. Almost lost my knob, <laughs> not my knob, the knob. <laughs> there. So thanks for the ideas guys, the suggestions. Hopefully you'll join me next time. And like I said, I appreciate you. Thanks for being the best fans. Patreons as well. Major shout out to you guys for your support in these crazy and uncertain times. But passion is the process. I ain't going anywhere. I'm here to stay. We won't quit. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much for tuning in all right there's a lot more i could do to this but just wanted to show you the process of starting with uh form dividing that form and beautifying the form just a quick recap we have the hammer sketch thanks again for the suggestion um, that was given we just did our sewing machine and took a look at the discord some of the video suggestions and we had a request for this little tank something like that anyways i did my own version um, also covered reflections and shading on surfaces and then talked about marker values and where to apply and how and how light scatters how it reflects and so forth so jam pack session thanks for hanging um, these sketches like I said will be available to patrons for download um, but as always I'll post a picture at some point today um, for those who just want to check them out on Instagram and if you're wondering what the difference is, you just have to join and download and you will see the difference in quality. All right. Thank you, everyone. Once again, um, it means a lot that you hung out. So that's one of the best ways to support. Check out sketchaday.com. Also, patreon.com slash sketchaday. Or just come say hi on Instagram or the Discord. Tons of ways to get in touch with me. All right. Thank you. Take care. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Monday. Peace and love to you.